Hello brothers and sisters of Christ, it's the monthly prayer request for April video, okay? And I just wanted to point out the reason I do these videos, brothers and sisters of Christ, I know very few people make comments in the, in the, in the bottom, uh, but the point is, is to remind you, brothers and sisters of Christ, to have a healthy, healthy prayer life, okay? 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, pray without ceasing. Now this is, I'll probably make a whole other video, but someone got on to me because they said you can't wear a hat and preach the Word of God because the Bible says that a man that has a head covering that prays or prophesies, first of all, I'm not prophesying, I'm preaching the Word of God and teaching the Word of God, praying and prophesying with his head covered, he's not talking about a hat, he's talking about having a woman as a head covering versus Jesus Christ as a head covering, but people really like the physical and they get on to me for this. But if you want to take the hat off when you pray, go for it. But remember the Bible says we're to pray without ceasing. Does that mean I can never wear a hat, ever? Because we're supposed to pray without ceasing. Uh, no, I can wear a hat and pray with a hat on. Okay. But brothers and sisters Christ, we're supposed to have a healthy prayer life. God wants you to talk to Him and bring all your cares to Him. All your burdens to Him and all your cares to Him. Especially with what's going on in the world today. Okay, the world is always going to get more and more wicked. We'll get into that a little bit, but the world's always going to get more and more wicked. We need to continue living for Jesus Christ every day. We are not supposed to change because the world is changing. And you have some men out there that are trying to push that. They're trying to push a change in us that we have to change who we are, children of God, living for Jesus Christ, being a light into the world, preaching the gospel. Oh no, we all got to hunker down because we have to endure to the end to be saved. I mean, endure to the end to be caught up. You know, that whole thing that I keep bringing up, because you have some brethren that are getting so fixated on what's going on in the world, they're, not, they're forgetting to get fixated on this where they used to be, and hiding this in their heart, and preaching the gospel. I'm already going off on this little rabbit trail, so I'll continue it for just a little bit, if you'll bear with me, brother says Christ. Why are we still here, brother says Christ? Why are we still here? The moment I got saved, why didn't I get caught up? Because we're supposed to be a light, a living testimony to this world of who Jesus is to, in our life. The changed life. The power of the gospel, which is the changed life. The new creature in Christ Jesus. The new birth. The new life that God gives us. The old man is dead and buried. And the verbal testimony. We're here to lead people to Christ. That's why we're still here. And if you're following a ministry that's predominantly saying, look at the world, look at the world, look at the world, and they're not pushing... Okay, while we're here and this world's getting that bad, we need to be preaching the gospel. Here's the gospel again. I know I've preached the gospel a million times, but here's it again. Here's it again. Salvation. Brothers is Christ, living a life of Christ, looking for that blessed hope, present tense. In this present world, looking for that blessed hope. Are you living a life of Christ so other people can see it? All right? Be a light unto the world. Okay. And one of the biggest things that's going to help you through everything that's going on out there to stay focused on this book right here and on your walk with the Lord is what? Prayer. Reading the Word of God and prayer is the two biggest things that's going to help you. Okay? Bible studies. Hiding God's Word in your heart and praying. So 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, We're to pray without ceasing, brothers and sisters Christ. Philippians 4.6 says, Be careful for nothing. Don't get distracted by this world and get so worried, oh, I don't have this or I don't have that. That you st We're going to be doing some studies where people are not turning to God, they're turning to the world. They're not turning to God for help, they're turning to the world for help. They're not going to God with a request, they're yelling at everybody around them. It's everybody else's fault. All right. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. No matter, remember what Paul said, no matter what state I'm in, therewith be content. He learned how to give God glory, give God thanks, regardless of what his state was. Financially, physically, God had to teach him that when he was sick, my grace is sufficient for thee. Whether your, whatever your physical condition is, whatever your spiritual condition needs to get better, you need to have a strong spiritual condition, but physical condition or financial condition, whatever your physical condition is down here, you're supposed to give God thanks. Okay? With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. God wants to hear your requests. That's what this is pushed for, is for you to have a healthy uh, prayer life. Where you're praying to God all the time. You could be work. I have the, God, the Lord's blessed me with the garden. We've got the garden almost up. i got a few more plants to plant, and then the garden's good to go. All cleaned up. 
Uh, the only thing left is I gotta clean the pond. That's a, that's a big pain, but I gotta clean the pond um, and get it all thinned out so it can grow back healthy and look beautiful and you can see the fish and everything and feed the fish. Um, but God blesses me with, the, with that kind of stuff and I make my request known, Lord, please bless this garden, let the food grow, especially this year. <laughs> but let the food grow, Lord. And there's other requests you can make that brethren have, okay? Especially those that are in Europe, our brothers and sisters of Christ that are in Europe right now. They desperately need our prayer and they have a lot of requests. But you do it with thanksgiving. You don't do it with a grudge. You don't do it losing your temper. Because there's times I get, I, I get so frustrated with God, like, I don't understand God. It seems like I'm getting angry and I need to calm down. I have to go for a walk and talk with Him. Wear myself out physically so I can calm down and start talking to Him like I'm supposed to. Humble with thanksgiving. Remembering who He is. Lord God Almighty, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come, creator of all things, my capital K King, my capital L Lord. Okay, not getting too familiar, but remembering who He is. And there's that. James 1 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. There's times you can get into prayer where you're like, God, I don't get this, I don't get this, and you're just complaining. And you forget, and it hits me sometimes, and it's like, wait a second, did I even ask God to show me the truth? Did I ask God for wisdom? Or am I just sitting here in this prayer whining and complaining? Now be careful, I've done that before, where I fall into the trap of whining and complaining. Make your request known unto God. Ask God for wisdom. Okay. John 17, 15, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from evil. Brother says Christ, with how evil and wicked this world is getting, we need to be praying for the brethren. That they stay on track. They stay on the narrow path the Bible talks about. That they keep their eyes on Jesus Christ. And don't let this world pull them down where they become worldly. I know brethren that great ministries, amazing ministries, and what happened over time they had covetousness which became idolatry. Their priorities change. They take glory from God and give it to other people and give it to themselves. They forget to give God thanks. They get so distracted by this world, they start uh, conforming to the world. They get spoiled by philosophy and vain deceit. Sometimes the love of money comes in, and they become money-oriented and not, I'm doing this for the Lord no matter what the cost. I don't care how poor I am, I'm doing this for the Lord. Okay, they lose track. Okay, we're to pray for the brethren as a whole in these last days. Every dispensation, if you're into dispensations like I am, please ignore if you can hear Victoria barking. If, you're into dispens if you believe in dispensations like I am, I'm dispensational. The Bible teaches there's dispensations. Every dispensation ends in apostasy. Every dispensation ends in apostasy. What's the apostasy to sit today? The Bible talks about and that before the man of sin is revealed, there's going to be a falling away. The body of Christ is going to go into apostasy before the catching away of the body of Christ. Do we desperately need to be praying for the body of Christ today more than ever? Absolutely. There are brethren falling away. There are brethren that are going the way of the world. Paul talks about, I think it's Demas, hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. He talks about people that have become lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. So they loved God at first, they were excited, they were on fire for the Lord, and then that fire dies down and they become lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Okay. Romans 1.9 says, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Brothers says Christ, I pray that you're praying for me. I know some brethren out there that their lowercase g God snapped his finger and said, Stay away from that man, and you just obey that lowercase g God. But I pray, even though you're staying away from me, that you're still praying for the brethren as a whole that you're still praying for me, and I'm praying for you. All the people that have turned on me, I'm praying for you. Uh, I'm praying for me, okay, that in these last days, that the mistakes I'm making, God can pick me up and correct me and get me back on the right path. All right? We need to be strongly praying for one another. Um, Romans 10, 1 says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer for God for Israel is that they might be saved. Are you also praying for the peace of Jerusalem? Every once in a while I have a couple of videos where I look at the wall, the, the wailing wall as they call it, I think it is. Uh, the wall over there in Jerusalem, and look at Jerusalem. There's a guy that does, there's a YouTube video of a guy that he doesn't talk. He's not trying to tell you he's Catholic. He's not telling you he's, he's um, 
Jew, he's not telling you the Muslim. Those are the three quarters they have over there. They have the Catholic quarter. They have the, it's called a Christian quarter, but it's not. It's Catholic quarter, uh, Muslim quarter, and they have the um, uh, Jewish quarter. And he walks through all the different cities over there in Israel and all the different places, and he walks around. And I watched some of those videos, and I talked with the Lord, and I talked to him about Israel, praying for Israel, okay? that they might be saved. As many of them can get saved before it's too late. But the peace of Jerusalem we're supposed to be praying for. So I just wanted to start this with that real quick, just to remind you, Brother Chris, the reason I do these videos isn't just because, because, because. I want you to have a strong prayer life like I have. I didn't always have this strong prayer life. It takes time to get used to praying about anything and everything. It takes time that you give God thanks. On the spot, you give God thanks for everything. On the spot, you give God glory for everything. Make sure you're not giving the glory to yourself. I still have people that say, thank you for your teaching. I say, I, I give them a thumbs up. If they say, oh, you're the greatest preacher or anything like that, I've got to tear them down a notch or two and say, listen, give God the glory. I know a preacher that he, he used to do that to a point, but now he loves people patting him on the back. You're the only Bible-believing, God-fearing man on YouTube. You're the only true preacher. You have these people saying that, and he's not doing anything. He's just puffing himself up pride, and he enjoys the pat on the back. Make sure you're correcting people. If you're in ministry, brothers in Christ, if you're in ministry, and you've got people that like to really pat you on the back and give you all the glory, all the thanks, make sure you're making comments saying, hey, give God the glory. I'm only able to be here because of God. Give God the glory. Give Him the thanks. I'm just grateful that God is using me. Praise the Lord that God is using me. There's a few brethren out there that are still listening and watching my stu God's studies that He's blessed me with. Praise the Lord. Okay, it's the equivalent, when I looked at the, the analytics on YouTube, it's like the equivalent of a house church. That's why I'd rather have a house church than a YouTube ministry. Um, but I'm still here because I'm doing what God wants, which brings me to my prayer requests. One of my prayer requests is that I be patient. I need help, brothers and Christ, being patient. Okay, one of the things I'm impatient about is sometimes I can get distracted by looking up too much that I forget that we're supposed to be doing the work of the Lord. And you know what I mean by looking up. I keep talking about the, the catching away of the body of Christ. I really want to go home. This world's really falling apart. Brothers and sisters of Christ, I've suffered a lot in the last couple years. I've lost my ex-wife to the world. I lost my daughter to the world. And now I've lost any opportunity to lead her to Christ. She passed away. Okay, I've lost brethren that have just gone more and more in the last couple years, just gone the way of the world, that love to be angry. I don't know what it is in the body of Christ. One of the things that I've noticed in the body of Christ, brothers of Christ, is the anger, the pride, the bitterness, the anger that leads to bitterness, okay, that leads to hate. That whole spirit of being arguing. They just love to argue and bicker and argue and bicker and, and divisive and be dividing and everything. It's, that, it's just really hardcore in the body of Christ today. And I keep praying. The Bible says we're supposed to be the same mind and have the same judgment. We need to be coming together in these last days to prevent as much falling away as possible. But it seems like everybody just wants to argue and fight a lot. And I've been caught doing it. <laughs> so I've even, I'm, I'm just as guilty. We need to focus more on what's important. Okay? Leading people to Christ so we can go home. But I need to be patient. God's got that all timed out. Be careful of ministries, brothers and sisters of Christ, that try to tell you, well, God's not coming for another five or ten years, or five to six years, or eight years, or He's not coming for a, for a while. Be careful of those ministries. Those are dangerous ministries. Those are ministries that are getting you to take your eyes off Jesus Christ and put them on the world. Now, I need to be patient, but you don't take your eyes off Jesus Christ. God's got that timing all out. We don't know when it's going to happen. The Bible says that that day should not coming to you as a thief in the night and it's a thief in the night and it's talking about the day of the Lord so since we're not supposed to go through the time of Jacob's trouble and the day of the Lord's not supposed to come on us as a thief in the night that means we're supposed to be looking for that blessed hope every day and you look for it with the life that you're living but one of the things I need is patience okay I need to be very patient and I need help being content I want a house church. I want to start doing things more for the Lord, but I've got to be content that in these last days, maybe this is what God has for us, just making a video every week, a Bible study video, one or two videos every week. That's what God has for me right now, and I've got to learn to be content with it. And I keep praying, though. Like I said, we just read about making your request known unto God. I keep praying that I want to do more. I go into town to gospel tract. I'll be doing that today. 
I walk the 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 streets every day because when I walk into the neighbors, run into the neighbors, they want to talk for five or ten minutes. And anytime a door opens, I try to mention the Lord and His and His Word. That God's the one that predicted what's going on in the world. And when we, they want to talk about what's going on in the world, I said, Hey, you know God's Word predicted what's going on in the world today. And this, I always bring God into it, trying to witness to Him verbally and a living witness. Okay. But there's times I want more. I want to do more, Lord. I want to do more. And God's like, I got you where I want you, and you're doing what I have for you. So I need help with being patient and being content with what God has me. He's blessed me with being content with food and raiment. Praise the Lord. Um, but sometimes we need to be content with what uh, boundary God has us in when it comes to ministry and what we're doing for the Lord. You know, everybody has their own gifts. You know, there's some brethren out there that have gotten so zealous that pride comes in and they think they can be an elder and a bishop and a deacon. And I understand wanting to do everything for the Lord. You want to do all the offices because you want to do all this work for the Lord. But you can only be one of those things. You can't be all three. Okay? And in order to be one of those things, you have to have a, have to have a house church. So be careful about that. You know, someone claiming to be a pastor, an online pastor. Eh. Uh, I'm a preacher and I'm a teacher online, but I'm not a pastor. I don't have a, a physical flock here that I'm accountable to, and they're accountable to me physically. Be careful about that. I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor. Nah. You're a preacher and you're a teacher when you're online, like I'm doing right now, Brother Says Christ. But I desperately pray to be content and have patience. Mm -hmm. uh, my knees. I found one of the things that helped my knees is that being content with food and raiment, one of the downsides is there shouldn't be a downside, but I have my shoes, and I kept on to my shoes. I threw them out already. But on the inside, where the what I call the heel of the of the foot, it's almost like the palm of the hand, but the the not the heel, but the palm of the foot. Uh, that's where it seems to wear away the most. And I had a hole in the shoes, and then the bottom part, the tread, was almost flat as can be. <laughs> and it's like Lord's like, I think it's time for you to get some new shoes. So I got some new shoes, and I started walking, and my knees started feeling better. They still hurt after walking and standing for a long time. Um, they still hurt. So I do pray for my knees, and if you've watched some of my other videos, I talked about I had a major sea, uh, heat, uh, heat stroke when I was in Okinawa, Japan, uh, when I was in the Air Force, and it turned into a seizure disorder, and I had three seizures every month, hardcore seizures, for almost nine years. And they finally got it under control, and then when I got saved, God got it under control. Okay, He got me off the medicine. He got me on new medicine, natural medicine. Um, but there's a, there was a price to pay. Like I so said, the Bible says, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. There's a price to be paid sometimes. Um, so as I get older and older, when I was younger, it seemed like I could bounce back just like that. It's no big deal. But as I'm getting older, it's really starting to hit me hard. Okay? All those seizures, all the damage that it did to my body when I was young. Okay, my knees are hurting, my lower back is hurting, I'm not being able to lift as much anymore. Some people say, that's just getting older. I understand, but this month is I, I is I was born 1979 April 30th, um, so this month I'll be turning 42, and there's people around me that are in their 60s that that do circles around me, and they can lift like five, three times, four times more than me, um, and they're not huge muscular men either. It's just it's just one of the things I've learned to have to deal with, and I've learned to um, adapt with my life. But one of my prayer requests was my knees. And I thank you for the brethren that have been praying for my knees, uh, for my eyes. I went and got my eyes checked. Uh, evidently, my eyes are fine. But they say I've been reading so much that I need to get new glasses that have three different levels of magnification. It's the same prescription, but it's, I don't know what it's called. But basically, when you look down, you're looking down through the bottom part to read. And then when you look up, you're looking through the middle part for just right here. And then when you look up, up... You're looking at a distance, uh, without moving up, without looking up, because you have to learn not to move your head. So keeping your face stationary, when you look through the bottom, it's for reading. You look through the middle, it's for right here. And when you look over here and you're looking out far, you look through the top part. And it's, I forget what the glasses are called, but they're saying I need those. Uh, that, that or I have to get some reading glasses um, that might help with my eyes. So those are two pr uh, um, prayer requests. Patience, content. Um, real quick, faults. Okay, faults. I want to throw this out there. Brothers and sisters, you can also put in your faults in the comment section. 
But one thing that I think we're lacking in the body of Christ, the sun's coming up really good, praise the Lord. Um, one thing we're lacking in the body of Christ is, are you confessing your faults one to another? Are you confessing your faults one to another? Do you have a brother or sister in Christ that you can confess your faults to? Okay. Uh, we need to be doing that because that's when that brother or sister Christ can hold us accountable to, our, to the Word of God and correct us on our faults and hold us accountable to, hey, you wanted that stuff out. You want to serve God. You wanted that stuff out. You have problems. Now, before people go too crazy, because I know sometimes the enemy likes to grab anything and everything and use it against me, and I've had brethren try to use it against me, okay? All sin is negative. So he, please hear me what I say. God has got Hollywood movies, TV shows, and video games out of my life and porn out of my life. The physical side of it. Now the battle's, battle's up here. Um, I was watching a study where Peter Ruckman says one of the things you got to watch, the study about watching, is your thoughts. And that's the thing that I need prayer for, brothers and sisters. My fault is I'll sit there, I could be talking to the Lord, and I was sitting under here when it was raining a couple nights ago, and I'm sitting there and I'm talking to the Lord, and then for some reason I stopped talking and was watching Victoria because it's a place underneath the awning. She doesn't like the rain, so she can do her business. And I'm sitting there, and without knowing it, all of a sudden I saw something that reminded me of a movie, and I started going through a movie in my head for the next ten minutes. I've watched those movies a million times that I could watch the movie without it actually hitting play. I could just sit here and in my head start daydreaming and go through a whole movie. Hollywood movie. TV show. Video games. Okay? I go into town. Brothers of Christ, there's a lot of the modestly dressed men and women in town. You go into town and Satan tries to hit you with those thoughts. I have to start singing a hymn. It's not because I'm just so filthy and wicked. It's because the Bible is specific when it says abstain from all appearance of evil. That's so this stuff doesn't get in your head. And once you've let it in your head, anytime you go by it, it's going to try to come back in. Your flesh is trying to try to get you. Satan's going to try to tempt you. And brothers of Christ, we need to be confessing our faults to one another. Those were my three major addictions that God really had to work on me and really made my life really hard as a Christian when I was newly saved because I held on to some of that stuff. There's still brethren out there today that hold on to things like video games. Holidays. I call them holidays. 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 Because they think physical, fleshly fun is more important than this book right here. It's more important than brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm telling you right now from experience, my testimony, I've got my testimony on there. It's not worth it. It is not worth it. But what are my faults? Those are my faults. I also mentioned being patient and being content. Uh -huh. We all have faults. My fault is not getting drunk. But you have brethren that says, hey, God got alcohol out of my life, but man, there's times that I get tempted. That's why you get to talk to a brother in Christ or a sister in Christ and get prayer from the brethren. When you confess your faults, it's a substance abuse. Whatever it is, cussing, the Lord's got it out of my mouth, but yesterday I lost my temper and I said a word that I haven't said in two years. You confess your faults. You don't confess your sins, your specific sins. I don't want to know the details, okay? Your faults. You confess your faults one to another, okay? I'd also like prayer for the garden. We already mentioned it a little bit, but I have a garden out there. Prayer for my garden if you can, brothers and sisters of Christ. Uh, wood stove, I'm still waiting. Things keep popping up. There's uh, wood on the outside of my house. There's a big two wood beams that come together at the top at the end of the house. The one side, they're all dry rotted and they're falling apart. And I have to get those replaced. Um, the guy's going to come and take care of those. He's going to get the uh, pellet stove out and plug the wall. And then from then, I'm just sitting here waiting. And I'm saving up every month to try to get a uh, wood stove. So I still need a prayer for the wood stove before winter time comes. Okay. There's things that need fixing on this house. I keep finding things. There's a corner of the house where I've kind of done something that's uh, temporary, but the cement in the corner of the house is, is eroding, and it needs to be redone so it keeps rats. And uh, three things that keep going under the house is we got four things. Mouse, rats, chipmunks, and pack rats. Huge uh, pack rats that really make a huge mess underneath the house. So I have to keep putting lots of traps out and everything, but I need to get that corner of the house fixed too this year. So there's things I need to get fixed. And brothers, I understand you guys have the same prayer requests. Pretty much you got probably have 
things that need to get fixed too. But I'm telling you what my prayer request is. Please tell me what your prayer request is in the comment section. Please, brother, sister, Christ. But we need to pray for each other, for our faults, okay, that we, we keep from evil. That we don't become part of the falling away. We need to pray, Lord. I tell, I tell the Lord, we need to pray, we need to pray, we need to pray. But this is Christ, we need to pray. Okay. Uh, one of the biggest things that's, that was scaring me lately is people are getting distracted by the world and you're forgetting that we have a job to do. And that's witnessing for Jesus Christ. Whether it's your life that's witnessing, the light that shines through you, Jesus Christ, living the life of Christ, being in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay. Uh, or verbally testifying. That's why we're still here. And some brethren have forgotten that. And they keep looking at the world and how bad it's getting in the world. And they keep pushing, you know, uh, there's nothing wrong. I have a pantry, a food pantry. There's nothing wrong with stocking up some food. You see, times might be getting a little hard, might be getting a little bad. By all means, stock up on some food um, and clothes and stuff. But let you know that that food isn't going to save you through those hard times. Those clothes that you're stocking up is not going to save you through those hard times. By all means, do it. I'm doing it. I'm not being a hypocrite. I'm doing it. But don't forget that it's God that's going to get us through this time period. And we trust the Lord. That no matter what happens, if I have to die for the Lord, absent from the body, present with the Lord. We're supposed to praise God. To be suffer to, there was a brother in Christ that had a hard time there for a while, and he still does, has a hard time praising God and giving God thanks to be counted worthy to suffer for his namesake and for his word. Okay? We, we, we can't forget that we're supposed to suffer. If you suffer for him, you shall reign with him. But if we're running to the hills and trying to live our dream life in the backwoods, um, off-grid living, where's the suffering? All right. So, brothers says Christ, I understand. I've always said this in old studies. I'm probably going off on another rabbit trail. Forgive me. The light's right in my eyes. Um, uh, the rabbit trail, but I've always said this, if you're in a city that's the city's just collapsed and it's fallen and it's just so wicked and it's dangerous, by all means, grab your family and move outside the city and then you and another brother in Christ can go into the city once a month or once a week, however God puts it on your heart, to lay gospel tracts out to witness. But your, sa your family is safe outside the city. Okay, by all means, I've always said that, but there's a lot of small cities where it's still safe to be in the city. It's these huge major cities in certain states. Um, that's getting really dangerous. So understand, get, get out of that dangerous situation, absolutely. But God's not calling all of us to just run for the mountains and cry, mountains fall on us and hide us from the, the beast, the man of sin. Uh, we won't be here for it. Don't be deceived. A lot of people are looking for the Antichrist instead of looking for Jesus Christ. They're looking for the beast, the son of perdition. They're looking for him. They're not looking. They, they claim to be pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catch away the body of Christ, but they've forgotten to look for Jesus Christ's coming. They're looking at the world and saying, okay, this is what's coming. They're looking for the mark of the beast system. They're looking for the uh, one world order. Okay, and so, on, and so on and so forth. Be careful. We're supposed to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. It says watch. We're to watch. Okay, we see what's going on. Yep, the Bible said that's going on. Now I'm going back to focusing on Jesus Christ. But some people get stuck over here. The world, stuck world, looking over here like they can't look away. I can't look away. You need to look away and look back at the Word of God and start going back to preaching to the lost world, preaching truth to the lost world, not telling people to make a run for the hills. Okay, you might be in a situation where you got to move. By all means, move. Get your family to safety. Once your family's safe, guess what? You get back to serving the Lord with the life that you're living. You get back to, through the whole thing, you should be praising God. Through the whole thing, you should be praying, uh, singing hymns, and staying in the Word of God. But that transition of moving to a safer place, you pray to God. That's another thing about making your request be known unto God. But I know, brethren, that where they're at, where they're at, they can't move. So you keep praying for them. That if they're in a dangerous situation, God will get them out of that dangerous situation. I know a brother in Christ that was in a... Um, uh, fixed income housing and there was just nothing but wickedness around him and he tried witnessing and he's sitting there vexed every day and he's trying to hide in his apartment because it's the only place that's a, a stain from all appearance of evil free home uh, area like like I said your home is the number one place that you can make an abstain from all appearance of evil free home and we're praying for him and we're praying for him and eventually God got him out of there and got him a little tiny house that he could rent with the, within his income and he got out of there. 
Okay, but it took time. It didn't happen overnight. It took time. And it took prayer. It took trust in the Lord that God knows what he's doing. He's there for a reason. God knows what he's doing. And we pray. So the power of prayer. Don't underestimate the power of prayer, brothers and Christ. Don't underestimate the power of the gospel. That God will put changes and God will put you where he wants you. So you can best serve him. And our, remember what our number one purpose is. Why are we still here? So we can witness to the lost world. Preach the gospel to them and be a living witness to the lost world. Okay, that's the number one reason why we're still here and we haven't gone home to be with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, those are things that I need prayer on, Brother Sis Christ. Please, please uh, put prayer requests in the comment section. And if you're bold and you want to put some of your faults that you need prayer on with faults in the comment section. But more than anything, it's, I'd rather have someone to talk to face to face with my faults uh, and prayer requests. But if you have a brother and sister in Christ that you can talk to face to face, do it. And don't forget, we leave faults out all the time. We tend to forget that we're supposed to be praying about faults. One of our weaknesses are we're supposed to be asking, we're supposed to be praying, taking it to God first in prayer. Remember what I've always said. You take it to God first in prayer. And then you make the prayer request among the brethren. Please, can you pray for me for this? Please pray for that. My biggest thing is I always ask them sometimes, if I know the person, know the brother or sister in Christ well, I'll, I'll, I'll just say, yes, I'll pray for you. But if it's someone I don't know very well, I always hit them up and say, did you take it to God first? Oh, yeah, yeah, I took it to God first. Okay, then I'll put it on my list of prayer requests. I still will, but, but I always try to motivate. You need to take it to God first. Okay. So that being that, this is our prayer request for the month of April and our motivation that we desperately need to be praying all the time. We need to have that prayer life. It's very, very important, Brother and Sister Christ, that you have that prayer life and you don't get distracted. You know what gets in the way of your prayer life? Worldliness. Covetousness, which is idolatry, having idols in your life. Sin. Pride. Okay. Ego. Right? That stuff, world, they just, you know, remember the three enemies. The world, the flesh, and Satan. They get in the way. You stop reading the Bible. You stop praying. You start getting too distracted with the world. Brother Jesus Christ, you've got to make sure that you keep your reading life strong and your prayer life strong. That you're hiding God's word in your heart strong and your prayer life. It's very important. So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And I, my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus. I love my brother and sister Christ, even the ones that have turned on me. I'm still praying for you all. Uh, the men in ministry that have turned on me, I, I'm praying for you still. Okay, I have an open door. I, am, I don't want to go too much on that, but I have an open door policy. You want to come talk to me? If you believe that I'm teaching something wrong or I said something wrong, come talk to me. Okay, Th those men out there that have turned in the ministry that have turned against me, they don't have an open door policy. I'm trying to have an open door policy. I'll be honest with you. If I find out you're not a Bible believer, all I'm going to do is pre preach the gospel to you. If I find out that you're following a false gospel, all I'm going to do is preach the true gospel to you. I won't talk to you about the Bible. But brothers and sisters Christ that believe in the true plan of salvation, repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. And afterwards, after God saves you, you're given a new life. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. The new birth. Okay, there's a change. That old people look at you and go, you're not the same as, as you were before you got saved. There's been a change. Okay, that happens after salvation. Okay. And the King James Bible is your foundation in all matters of faith and practice. I'm here. Come talk to me. If you feel I've said something wrong, come talk to me. If I'm teaching something wrong and you have scripture and you want to talk to me about scripture and you're using scripture to prove me wrong. I had one brother in Christ that hit me up and said he disagreed with me with Paul and Barnabas when I did that study on Paul and Barnabas where people always make it out like there was no sin involved and it was just that they had a disagreement and it was an agree to disagree and it just got so heated they went their separate ways. But I proved beyond a shadow of a doubt there was sin involved. But only by pride cometh contentions and the Bible says there was contentions. And the Bible says, only by pride cometh me. So there was sin involved. I believe Barnabas was the one that was prideful. And Paul kept saying, this is why. It's like today me pointing to the Bible saying, this is why. And Barnabas just saying, well, I don't care. Here's my feelings and opinions. Barnabas never said why it's justified to take Mark, whose surname is John, with them. But the guy disagreed with me, which is okay. And he came and we talked on Skype for over an hour. And... We did, I didn't get anywhere. He didn't get anywhere. It's not a salvation issue. And we parted ways in a good way. 
you know, open door. That's what I try to do. Um, I still have an open door for Brother JT that's turned his back on me. I have an open door for Brother Brian who's turned his back on me. You want to talk about the scriptures? I'm here. But they don't want to talk. But brothers, I have an open door. And brothers, says Christ, when it comes to brethren, you should have an open door to talk to brethren. Okay? We need to pray. One of the things that's not on my list now that I thought about it, we need to pray that the brethren have more grace for brethren in the sense of forgiveness. When a brother in Christ comes to you and repents and forsakes, by all means, brother says Christ, forgive them and get back to that hard... Uh, I can't say that word. I got corrected on that word. I said hardcore before in the past. Not Fervent, fervent fellowship. Okay? The fellowship that's strong. Okay? Solid. Okay, solid ground. Okay? Get back to that fellowship again. We need to have more grace when it comes to forgiveness. Okay? Brethren need to drop their pride. Okay, that's the big thing that's going on. Hardcore pride and the bitterness and the fighting and everything. And, but now I'm back circling again. But brother says, Christ, please, please, I'm praying for you and I'm here to help in any way that I can. Brother says, Christ, I'm here. All right. So I'll say it again. Grace and peace from God our Father. I want grace and peace among the body of Christ. Grace and peace from God our Father and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Are you in Christ Jesus our Lord? It's a good question. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.